Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 57 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about exporting grid view data to Microsoft Excel and Word. We'll be using this table TBL employee for this demo. Now, I want to retrieve this data from this table and then display that within the grid view control. And then underneath the grid view control, I want to have two buttons, export to Excel, export to Word. So when I click this button export to Excel, then I want to export the data that is present in this grid view into an Excel worksheet. Similarly, when I click you know, another button export to Word, which we don't have at the moment, I want to export this data from the grid view control to a Microsoft Word document. Obviously, to achieve this, the first thing to do is to write the ADO.NET code to retrieve data from this table and then display that within the grid view control. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop a grid view control onto this web form. Let's auto format this. Let's choose brown sugar scheme. Now let's drag and drop a button control and let's set the text on the button control to export to Excel. So go to the properties of the button control and change the text to export to Excel. Now let's double click this button control to generate the event handler within the page load event. Now we need to write ADO.NET code to retrieve data from this table and then display that within the grid view control. And we discussed about ADO.NET in a very great detail in video.NET video series. So please watch those videos first. To speed things up, I have this code already implemented. So let me copy and paste that here. So within the page load event, if not is post back, meaning if this is the initial get request of the web form, then use the configuration manager class, read the connection string from web.config file and store that connection string in this variable. And using that connection string, we are building a SQL connection object. Look at the SQL command, select star from TBL employee. We are passing the SQL command as a parameter to the SQL data adapter object. We are gonna execute this command using this connection object. And then look at this, we are creating a data set object. And then we are invoking the fill method of the data adapter object to fill the data uh, you know, into this data set after we execute this command. Then we are setting the data set as the data source for the grid view control invoking data bind method. Okay, so if we run this application at the moment, you know the data will be retrieved from TBL employee table and then displayed in the grid view control. Now, when we click this button, export to Excel, we want to export the data that is present within the grid view control into an Excel worksheet. Okay, so anytime we want to send something to the client, now here we want to send the grid view data to the client in, in an Excel sheet. So we need to you know, do that using the response object. For example, let's say I want to write cookie information onto a client computer. Which object do I use? I use the response object. Okay, similarly here, we want to send the Excel, I mean the grid view data in an Excel format to the client. So I have to use the response object for that. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So within the button click event, I'm going to use the response object. The first thing that I need to do is call the clear or clear content method. Now the clear content method is going to clear any content from the response buffers. Now, if there is any other content within the response buffer, that will be cleared when you invoke this method. And the next thing that I want to do is, I want to append some information to the response header that's going from the server to the client. Okay, so to the HTTP response header, I want to add some information. So what is that information going to be? Now I want to tell, you know, to the response object, the data that I'm going to send, you know, that has to be opened up, uh, you know, using Microsoft Excel. And, uh, you know, I have to specify the name of the Excel file. Now to specify the name of the Excel file, now I'm using a response header called content disposition. So content hyphen disposition. So I'm using this HTTP response header to specify the name of the you know Excel file that I'm going to send to the client. And to do that, I have to say it's an attachment, semicolon, and then file name is equal to whatever name that you want to give to your Excel file. So here we are you know, storing employees information. So I'm going to specify the name for my Excel file as employees.xls. Excel files have an extension of .xls, so I'm using that extension here. So that's response, you know, 
dot append header so to the header uh, you know of the response object you know we are using this con content disposition header which is basically used to res uh, you know specify the file name for our excel file and the next thing to do is to specify the content type you know uh, the mime type basically so using content type property so on the response object specify your content type our content type is nothing but application forward slash excel so it's an excel data okay so those are the three things that we need to do on the response object after that I'm going to create instances of two classes here you may not understand why we are using those classes at the moment but don't worry that will be clear in just a bit so I'm going to use a class called string writer this class is present in system.io namespace so let's go ahead and import that system.io so it's string writer class so let me create an instance of this class string writer in a bit you'll understand how we are going to use this class and then I'm going to create another class HTML text writer class again in a bit we'll understand how we will be using this class so HTML text writer I'm going to call the instance as HTML text writer is equal to new HTML text writer and look at the constructor of this class it's expecting an object of type text writer but then look at what I'm going to pass to the constructor of this class I'm going to pass the string writer object but then you know I don't get any compilation errors look at this the constructor expects a text writer but I'm passing string writer that's because if you look at the string writer object if I go to the definition string writer class inherits from text writer class so we can pass string writer to this HTML text writer you know class as an inherited type in a bit we'll understand how we are going to use these two classes okay so those are the two objects I need and then the next thing we have to do here is where is our data present our data is present in grid view control and then what is the ID of this grid view control it's grid view one so the ID of the control is grid view one so now what I'm going to do is grid view one dot I'm going to invoke a method called render control and look at the uh, you know method it's expecting an object of type HTML text writer do we have an object of that type yes HTML text writer object I have here so I'm going to pass this object to this method now what is this going to do look at this render control method look at the IntelliSense it says outputs server control content to a provided you know system.web.ui.html text writer object so you know the content of this grid view control will be written into this object okay so what is the content that is going to be present in this grid view control the employee data not only this employee data the grid view control will also contain you know the HTML of the table cell table row etc okay so this HTML text writer object will have both the content and the controls HTML okay so that's why we have used this HTML text writer object so the entire content and the uh, HTML will be returned into that object and now what I'm going to do I'm going to say response dot write and then I'm going to use the string writer object so response dot write string writer dot to string and then finally I'm going to say response dot end okay so that's all you know the code that we need to export data to Excel so look at this this render control method is going to render the content and the HTML you know to this object HTML text writer and look at this HTML text writer it is actually taking in this string writer object as a parameter so you know now whatever content and HTML that we have in this object is now converted into a string format and stored in this object and then what I am doing with that object I'm converting that to string representation using the to string method and then passing on that to the write method of the response object which is going to write that to the client and in the response header we specified that the name of the file is employee.xls so this data will be returned into the Excel file and we are ending the response which means everything will be flushed out the response has ended 
okay so let's go ahead and run this and see if it works as expected so when the web form loads as you might expect the data should be retrieved from TBL employee table and then displayed within the grid view control now let me click this button and see what's going to happen huh look at the error we have an error stating control grid view one of type grid view must be placed inside a form tag with run at is equal to server now let's actually go back and see if our grid view control is present inside a form tag yes it is look at this the grid view control is here and it's present inside this form tag with run at is equal to server attribute then why am I getting this error that's because of this render control method so this render control method you know causes the confusion it makes a dot net think we are dynamically rendering a control outside of the form tag okay so obviously to fix this error all we need to do is we need to override a specific method called verify rendering in server form so you don't have to remember that name by heart but then look at this the moment I say override and then I press space then it's going to show me all the methods that can uh, that I can override so there is a method called verify rendering in server form and then all I need to do is you know just override that method I don't have to provide any implementation here so this method confirms to dotnet runtime environment that though we are rendering controls dynamically they will be rendered as part of you know a, a server-side form okay so that's it let me go ahead and run this now and see if it's gonna work as expected okay let's click on this report uh, export to Excel look at that I have this employees dot XLS let's open that and we should have our employees data but then we are going to get a warning message here look at this the file you are trying to open uh, employees dot Excel uh, XLS is in a different format than specified by the file extension verify that the file is not corrupted and is from a trusted source before before opening the file do you want to open this file now now when I click on this warning yes look at that I have the file opened okay so why am I getting that um, error message I mean it's not an error message it's a warning message the warning message is a user notification function that was added to Microsoft Excel 2007 so the warning message can help prevent any unexpected problems that might occur because of possible incompatibility between the actual content of the file and the file name extension okay and if you want to resolve this error we need to edit the registry of our operating system now you can find those instructions here in this Microsoft article here so if you want to get rid of that error you need to edit the registry and to do that you can make use of this article here uh, I'm not going to go into the details of editing registry right now but then if you look at uh, you know the output here within the grid view control I mean we got the output but then look at the formatting you know it it is actually applying that background color to the entire row of the header as well as the uh, data rows now I don't want to you know I don't want the colors to be spread across the entire worksheet I only want those background colors to be present just you know where we have the data okay so to properly format this you know obviously you can apply styles to your grid view control as well loop through the header row apply whatever styles you want for the cells in the header row similarly do the same thing for uh, you know the data rows as well and just to speed things up I have this already implemented so let me copy this and paste that within our you know code behind file here so look at the code what am I doing I'm saying grid view one dot header row to that you know on the header row we are using the style property and we are adding a style of background color you know that's the style background color I'm setting it to FFF meaning I'm setting it to white color all red green and blue all the three colors I'm setting it to FFFF and FF which means you know it's a white color and then I'm looping through each cell within the head header row and then for each table cell I'm setting a background color of A55129 that's nothing but I picked up that color number from the header row style here look at the header row style that's what is the header row style when we applied you know that auto formatting of brown sugar the header row color number is that one 
So that's what we are specifying here for the header row. And then look at this for each data row, for each data row, I'm looping through each data row and each data row has got cells within them. So the first for each loop loops through each row and then the inner for each loop is going to loop through each row. I mean each row cells and then for each cell within the data row we are setting a background color of FF F7 E7 which is nothing but you know the row style background color here. So I just picked it up from the auto formatted HTML that we have here. And that's it. So if I am going to run this now, and then when we export it to Excel, this time it should be properly formatted. The formatting should be applied only for the data part. So let's open that. So we get the warning again. I open that, look at that. You know, the colors are applied just to the grid we control. All right, fine. Now we have seen how to export this data to Excel. Now let's say how to export it to Microsoft Word. To do that, all I need to do is let's drag and drop another button control here. And let's set the text on the button control to export to Word. And let's double click that to generate the event handler method. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this entire content. I mean, the code that we have in export to Excel click event handler and paste that in this button to click event handler, which is going to export the data to Microsoft Word. Okay, now I'm going to make only two modifications. The first modification here is instead of the file extension XLS, I'm going to change that to .doc and then here the content type instead of Excel, I'm going to say Word. That's it. Let's go ahead and run this now and see uh, you know, if it's going to export the data to Microsoft Word document. All right, so let's click on this button, export to Word. Look at that, I have a Word document there. I click on the Word document, it opens up Word and we should have this grid view data within Microsoft Word. Look at that, it works exactly as expected. All right, so in this video we have seen how to export data to Excel as well as to Microsoft Word. All right, on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.